Good evening, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Welcome to another Wednesday. As it is our weekly habit, this is a sweet time of prayer and praise. Thank you for joining us, even if we are separated by distance, but definitely we are united in one spirit as we come to seek our Lord together as his people and as his church. So today we will read one of Paul's letters to the church in a city called Corinth in Greece. And we find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 13, Paul says that just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the church in Corinth was not united. They quarreled and sued against one another. They formed groups and cliques and they hated and reviled the other members, they backstab, trash talk, and even gossip against one another. Now, among these, they also committed adultery and incest. Now, apart from that, many of their leaders were divided. They used their gifts to show off and were still exert authority over other members. This church was a horror show. This church was wrecked with disunity and divisions. Paul heard this report apparently from some of the members of the church. And so, like a loving father, he wants to warn and to teach and to discipline any wayward child. So among many issues, one of them that Paul wants to deal with is about blessings and gifts. Different people are gifted differently. For example, in terms of personality, some are eloquent, some are intuitive, some are expressive. In terms of gifts, some are good in teaching, some are good in worship, some are good in counseling. Now it is with this great diversity that God has given the church not to show off, but to build up the church. Now in this instance, the Apostle Paul calls the church the body of Christ. Because just like a body, the church comprises of different parts. And in a body, each limb is to strengthen and to build up the body. And not every part does the same thing. Thank God, right? Each has their own part to play and their own role to fulfill. And when done well, it benefits the body. Now notice in the verses that we have just read, just in these two short verses, what is the word that is been repeated? O-N-E, one. One. This is key because Paul sees the church as one unified body. And this body, with many different sets of gifts and skills, is nonetheless unified. Because like a good football team or basketball team, you have strikers who are good in scoring points, but you also need defenders who guards against the opponents to stop them from conceding points. So different roles, but yet, functioning as one unit. Now, how can a church, the body of Christ, function in unity? Can we, can we, in all our diversities, achieve unity? Now, outside the church, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. People who try to achieve unity with common agendas, in clubs, in societies, and of course in politics, right? 
So we see leaders laying aside their differences when they are faced with a common enemy. Or even in the workplace, when it's closer to home, you know, you lay aside your differences for the sake of achieving the company's goals. Even sometimes it means uh, having to have to work with your closest enemy. All for the sake of survival. When we look at it, what motivates unity in diversity is largely for self-preservation and self-agenda, which may work for today, but is just probably one moment away from turning against us. What about the church? How about the body of Christ? Do we unite for self-preservation? Well, to a certain degree, we may say that's true. Thus, when there is a common goal to see the church grow, well, we unite for this sake. But that's not enough. Because for Paul, Paul has a grander motive to teach us the basis for our unity in our diversities. And his first motive is to say that we unite because of Christ. We unite because of Christ. Because we are baptized into one body. And basically to be baptized means to be united with Christ. So to be baptized into Christ, it actually means to be united with this body. We are God's body. We are His body. Body. The church is not our body, it is his body. Now, if we are his body, then Jesus is our head. When we are in the same body, we obey the same head. The second reason is because of the Holy Spirit. See what the Holy Spirit does. He regenerates us, he causes us our rebirth, he, he's the one who baptizes and unites us into the body of Christ and so that we are in the same body. And that's why Paul can say that Jews, Greeks, slave or free, all were made to drink of one spirit. Now this extends, as you can see, beyond racial and social divide in this body. There are different race, different standings, but the same spirit. And so there are different personalities, still the same spirit, different gifts, the same spirit, different ministries, but still the same spirit. Now in the context of Canning Garden Baptist Church, we can have many applications, but today I will draw your attention to pray and to focus on the different ages and generations that are present in the church. We will focus from the youngest and to the oldest. Because we have differences, we have different opinions and different perspectives. But one thing we have in common, we have one head, we are one body, we serve one king, we obey one God. And so this evening, come, come and let us focus and pray for every generation present in the body. Now as we rejoice and celebrate the diversities of the body of Christ, let's commit the ministries of all generations to the Lord. And may the Lord hear our prayer as we humbly seek His face. Amen.